Welcome to Catch and Go. It's a blessing to come to you and to deliver the word of the Lord. Well, let's not waste any time. And let us go right into the subject in which I want to talk to you on this telecast. Sometime last year, I spoke on the Valley of Slaughter. And I was taken into a vision prior to that or in before that, before I spoke on the Valley of Slaughter. And the Lord took me into a vision and began to show me many things in this vision. And as I was caught in this vision, the first thing that appeared to me was a skull. And then after that appeared to me, then I saw what was someone tossing many skeletons and skull and they started to pile up. And I began to wonder and I began to think what this whole vision meant and what was the Lord trying to tell me in this vision. And so I saw the bones piling up also and the pile of bones and the uh, skulls uh, piling up on top of one another. And I saw an individual throwing these skulls on top of each other. And then I realized that in this vision, as I'm caught in this vision, I said to myself, uh, in the vision, I said, the Lord must be speaking concerning the resurrection and concerning Ezekiel 37 and concerning the graves uh, that the Bible declares that, that the dead are the first to rise and that the graves will open up. And then I also begin to think uh, as I'm in this vision that the Lord also was speaking about the coming war of Ezekiel 38 in the coming war in the battle of Armageddon. And as you and I know that the battle of Armageddon is really starting to shape up a lot quicker and a lot sooner than we all thought about. As you know, in my last telecast, I spoke on the demon of Al in Lucifer. I also spoke to you prior to that telecast. I spoke the war against the saints. And so I was caught in this vision. And then I also, in this vision, I did mention when I did my telecast on the Valley of Slaughter concerning the vision and the encounter, I spoke also on the demon of Al, which I just did and we launched our last week on our latest telecast. Then I spoke about the Holy Cause in the coming purge. There's coming a coming purge and a coming cleansing. I've been speaking about that since 2008, that the Lord was about to begin to cleanse the church and to bring biblical restoration to the entire body of Christ as a whole. And then I begin to talk about that we were in and we are in raptured mode. That the end of the church age is basically coming to the end. But one of the things that stood out the most recently in the last couple of weeks was something that left me stunned and quite surprised and I believe that I did share that in uh, our last video, The Demon of Alan Lucifer. And that was what the Lord said to me. And these were the words of the Lord. He said that he will speed up things and he will cause things to accelerate a whole lot faster. And that the ending has come. Could we be raptured in 2021? Can we be taken out of this earth any minute? I believe that with all of my heart, the church could be raptured in 2021. But as I said before, the Lord has not spoken to me that the church will be raptured in 2021. And I want to make that very clear to you. Now, I also said that God said to me in this vision sometime last year, that he was coming to remove the souls of the saints from the earth. And I believe that the vision concerning the valley of slaughter consists of many things. The shaping, which we see of the battle of Armageddon, the resurrection, the, the graves opening up and the dead rising up to meet the Lord. 
and also concerning the time and season. And from Ezekiel 33, 37, excuse me, the dry bones. I want to say prophetically and declare something prophetically to everyone that I truly believe that with more convincing, convincing things in my heart that the Lord can actually take us any, any minute now. I know that I spoke on five parts concerning the birth of revival that is coming. I did mention that it's not just a revival, but it's the final visitation and the final outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I believe it's a move, and a movement is coming greater than anything we've ever seen before. So when you hear me say the word revival, actually what I'm saying is there is a shaking and awakening coming. And we are in the moment of truth. It is, we're living in a moment called now. And the Spirit of God took me into this vision and this encounter sometime last year. And he began to speak to me, to speak on the valley of slaughter. And then I went on to touch from 2 Kings chapter 23. I also told you that the battle between good and evil and the coming crash between the saints and evil. We are in a war. We are practically in a collision. Not only between good and evil, but our freedom is at stake. We are being challenged in so many ways. But let us not undermine the ability and the potential of what God has given us, and that is that He has given us the ability to overcome all obstacles and to be confrontational and challenge every single obstacle and every single challenge. And as long as you maintain an unwavering faith, God will always sustain the righteous. God will always look after His children. And what I wanted to say to you that in this vision, I felt that the Spirit of God was talking concerning the battle of Armageddon and is shaping up, as I just said many times on this telecast. I also want you to know that, that uh, these are times where there are times of separation. We are about to see where God is about to separate the righteous from the wicked, those on the right and those on the left. For God is making one final call. And he's wanting me to speak and also remind you of Ezekiel 33, the hour of the watchman and God's final warning and how God ends this whole thing because God said, which I was left stunned and surprised, he is speeding up things at such an accelerating pace that I believe that many are going to get caught off guard because many live today as is we're living here on this earth for another 20, 30, 40 years. And I have news for you. We are going to leave this place. We're just passing through. We're going to leave this earth very, very soon because God is about to intensify in His judgment and His wrath is coming and more than likely you'll see that He's going to start to wipe out many, many, many people and many giants and separate the righteous from the wicked. I also said that in this vision and that the Lord remind me when I spoke from the Valley of Slaughter last year that I share with you from 1 Timothy chapter 4 which it talks that in the last days many will abandon their faith and be led by demon doctrine in seducing spirits. Many are being seduced. Many are being deceived. Many have given up and many practically can't tell what is true or what is false or false or truth. 
And that concerns me because as I lit, did my last telecast on the demon of our in Lucifer, I told you to pull out your one dollar bill. And look on the top hand right, right hand side of your dollar bill, you will see a symbol of a little owl. You will see an owl on your dollar bill on the top right hand side. I also said that in my telecast last year, the Valley of Slaughter, that uh, as I spoke from 2 Kings 23, and I touched on that chapter, I said that there is another word there that uh, means uh, uh, Gehenna, where Gehenna means hell, and the final judgment of where the wicked will go. God is about to separate the righteous from the wicked. We are, we're, but we're also living in a time where the Lord just flashed to me Matthew chapter 10, and I believe it's from verse 37 on down. There is coming any moment now when fathers will betray their sons, sons will betray their fathers, mother will betray their daughters, daughters will betray their mother, and you will see that if you're not careful, your home, your house, will be divided, and even you in your children. Keep and bear in mind that you are to be extremely watchful and vigilant and not be caught in this whole thing because Matthew 10 is about to also intensify, pick up, and you're going to see that a lot of children are going to disobey and rebel against their parents, against their mother, and against the father, and the father and the mother. Now, as I have just shared that with you, I also want you to know that we are in the battle not just against an evil empire, but we're fighting mediums and witches and warlocks and those that are chanting against your souls and individuals and people that perhaps you consider them their, your friends, but you cannot discern or even know what's going on in the living room late at night, and they're practically chanting against your soul and releasing curses and rituals and bewitchment and witchcraft against you and your family and your loved ones and even your marriage and your business. You need to know who are your friends, who's your neighbor. You need to clearly understand. We are in the dark ages. Everything outside is pitch dark. But I want to tell you and remind you that last year in this vision in which which I was caught in, excuse me, called, I called it the fig tree is right. I saw the angel of the Lord with a sickle in his hand, a golden sickle, and he was watering the earth and giving the earth its one final last breath. And he was watering also the souls of the saints. And I said that on July 1st of 2021, I believe that God begins to bring about it doesn't start. It's the making of the final visitation and the final outpouring and the final word of the manifestations of the book of Acts and the manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I said that I believe that from July of 2020 to July 2021, God has us in the eagle's nest. But on July 1st of 2021, I believe that God begins to wipe out COVID-19. There is coming a liberation and a cancellation of, I call it, watering moment, when the waters will burst and the waters will break out. I believe that sometime last year, what the Lord said to me sometime last year, that there are particles in the air that are not visible, but I believe that God will do a supernatural things because we serve a supernatural God who does supernatural things. And the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, that he is still the same yesterday and today and forever. And what I'm trying to say to you, that a supernatural God, and as 
as uh, three weeks ago, the Lord opened up my spirit and he said, can you detect, can you discern, can you sense the atmosphere? We were walking, we were out uh, doing some things and I turned to my wife and I said, I sense that the Lord is telling me that the, the, the atmosphere or the air is quite different. And I believe that what he what he said to me and what he showed me and what I began to pick up uh, what he was saying to me was that God is about to clear the atmosphere. And not only clear the atmosphere, but he was going to clear completely wipe out COVID-19. I said sometime last year, the beginning of the last year, that this whole thing will last at least 18 months. Now, I want to make this clear on this telecast. I am saying that I believe that God, when he took me into that vision, and I named it the fig tree is right, because that's what he said to me, and I saw the angel with the golden sickle in his hand. I believe God wipes out COVID-19, as I said, he would. Now, as you know, we are fighting a war. I spoke on the war against saints, the war against the saints. I said to you that the Lord just quickened to me, opened my ear, and said, remind them that I said to you to tell them, can you hear the sounds of the footsteps of God's army and God's soldier? 10,000 soldiers and thousands of thousands of more soldiers. God just said to me, being anchored by Jesus. Jesus anchors us and leads us and brings us up, up, up and above and brings us to victory. Because that's what Hebrews 6.19 says. Hebrews 6.19 says that Jesus is the anchor of your soul. And Jesus is anchoring the church, not only anchoring the church to its final crossover and anchoring us to victory, but the church goes out in a blazing way in which I have said that I will do a telecast and a title called The Third and Final Crossover. Now, let me continue with my message on the Valley of Slaughter. We are fighting mediums and spirits and witches and warlocks and God's judgments has intensified and his wrath is about to pick up, including, I have said that, remember that the Lord showed me his thumb and then a few weeks later, he said to me, the finger on the wall. God's got his finger all written on this whole thing. And so you know, as I've always said, that there will be no economic trade agreement between the nations. God simply declared many years ago that this will be an economic warfare concerning the economy and trade, concerning the battle of oil, who controls oil, and not only that, who controls the financial market, but we're headed for a global crash. And but what I want to say to all the saints, and what I want to declare is good news, that I believe that you're about to see our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is a supernatural God who does supernatural things with convincing proof, wipe out and cancel COVID-19 once and for all. Waters the earth, give it this last bit of oxygen, breathe into it a new fresh air, as I said, that three weeks or three, half, three and a half weeks ago, the Lord opened my spirit and he said, can you detect what's going, the atmosphere? Can you see, uh, son, what you sense in and what you feel? And he opened up and I felt that there was a new set of fresh air that God was about to bring in this time of biblical restoration and a restoration movement that once and for all, God does 
a supernatural thing, which he's always moving the supernatural. He is a supernatural God. And by the way, the only God that in James 2, 19, even the demons tremble and confess with their mouth that there is only one God and they tremble at the presence of God. There is coming, there is, we're already, excuse me, in an economic warfare. There is a battle for oil. And what I want to say, which I am a bit, uh, not a bit, but quite concerned, is that there is a whole lot of pollution in the body of Christ. People are polluting things left and right. People are moving ahead of God. There is actually no revival going on because I have said already the mandate in the day which God has set in place, July 1st of 2021. I've also said that that God in 2008 and begin to, to continue through 214 and 15 and 216 and 217, 18, 19 and 20 to 221 has a, over and over with overwhelming convincing proof and uh, encounters has completely over and over let me know that we will go into house churches. Well, I have said this over and over, but many have probably not embraced it or say senior pastors do not embrace it because they're concerned. But you got to understand that God is simply flushing us into the book of Acts, reshuffling the leaders, okay, in your churches, and bringing us into one accord and into the spirit of unity. For I have declared that God is calling us for wisdom, calling wisdom, and also a call for unity. With all that saying, I have said also that no one solves this trade war. It only leads to a collision. I also spoke to you from the valley of slaughter on my telecast last year from Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 30. Not only that, but I also said that not only last week that I saw so many skeletons and bones and I saw someone tossing these things, a man with a black cap and he was wicked and evil. But I've also said that the church today and many believers in the body of Christ are being worn down and that demon of Al is wearing down many of the saints. I have said that concerning the vision in which God took me, um, which I share with you, uh, two telecasts of the war against the saints, Talk about how they're still to this day sacrificing children. And I talked about that vision. And I talked about the Illuminati's. I want you to know that the coming war between Ahab and Jezebel and the saints and Ahab and Jezebel. Let me clear that up and let me bring clarity to that. What I am saying, the battle, the coming war between the saints and Jezebel and Ahab. That's what I wanted to say. And I want you to know from 2 Kings chapter 9, by the way, I also want you to know that God is giving his final warning to the church, to the body of Christ. And I was so blessed that today I received a text from one of my closest friends and in the ministry and one of the closest pastors that uh, I have as a friend and he just texted me this morning a verse in a chapter and the chapter was Ezekiel 3 verse number 17. Keep in mind that I want you to know that that the Spirit of God is calling and having and then training men and women, excuse me by the way, men and women to be his watchmen in this last hour. And from Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel chapter 5, 6 and 7, 
The end is coming very quickly. God is speeding things up and God is accelerating things. And we can see that the battle of Armageddon is shaping up real quickly. Now, I want you to also know that many are losing confidence not only in their call, but in their ministry. We see attendance is low. People are not tithing. People are not coming to church. But I want to remind you that God has set you up. Not a setback, but a setup and a master, please. Because the best of you is coming out. And God is about to take you on some new seasons. And a new season which you experience a life living a life of abundance. In a victorious life as a believer. Even in a global crash a food shortage, a global famine, you will shine in these dark moments. But I want you to know, to keep in mind, that God is simply saying that he's also about to close this thing. I also will do a telecast called One Hour. And you will probably say, what do you mean one hour? What I'm simply saying that I believe, uh, and you don't have to agree with me, that the Bible says that there will be one more shaking. That God will shake the heavens and the earth. And there's a shaking and awakening coming. And he will shake the body of Christ as well. And what I'm saying is that I believe. Because we've all been talking about revival. We've all talking about this final outpouring. I believe with all of my heart that what the late Kathleen Kuhlman declared that she believes that God can heal everyone in one single day. I also believe that in one single hour, God can bring the greatest conversion, the greatest outpour, and the greatest move ever seen before. Maybe, perhaps, many will start to see how I'm seeing things in the spirit. I believe that God can shape the foundations of the heavens and earth and bring about a revival move, but it's not just a revival where people are falling out in the floor, they're rolling all over the place, or the holy laughter. It's something you've not seen before. It's brand new, as I declare it from Isaiah 48, verse 1 to 7. He's doing new things. Things that he has never done in your life. Things that you have never seen. Because it is a fresh rhema new word. A rhema word in which he has never declared ever to the entire corporate body of Christ. There is one thing that's coming and the Lord just showed me. He didn't speak it. He showed me the word shift. There is a shift coming and there is a realignment and an alignment coming and a transformation and a reformation. And let us keep in mind that weeks ago God declared that there is coming a Catholic reformation as well. God is about to reform and reshape and the Catholics are going to be even more open to the charismatic move, to the prophetic move, to the apostolic move. And to the final move and the final visitation of the Holy Spirit. Now as I continue, I've also said that I will explain one day the three things why I'm concerned. Not only that there is so much pollution because there are people lo loading up, uploading video on social media, on their YouTube channel and on Facebook. And they're declaring that God told them this and God told them that and that they had a vision or they had a dream. But let me tell you, you cannot deceive God and God cannot be mocked. There are a lot of people claiming and saying this and that and that and this. But God knows who are his true prophets, who are his true saints, and who actually he's revealing things to. Uh, let me make this point and get this across to you. That whatever the case may be, we 
disagree with each other. We may not agree with each other on, on anything or, or on everything. And we agree on some things or some things or whatsoever. But I want you to know this. That God knows every single man and every single woman and every single leader and every single ministry that will be part of of his end time army. And God is not into people sticking together as groups. God is not into that. This is all about God. It's not about a man. It's not about a mega church. It's not about a giant. It's not about an individual. It's about a corporate unity of body of saints coming together and one accord and one voice, one voice together in this final outpouring of God's end time army. Now, as you know, people are disturbed. People are confused. People are suicidal. Being suicide is increasing. And what I want to say to you that I also said last week and the week before that I believe that America will be restored. But America will be divided into two. Deeply divided. The blue and the red. America will be divided into two, but unified. And you say, how can it be divided? How can you say it will be deeply divided, but unified? In the sense that I have said in the earlier telecast that there will be, these are the times of separation. God will separate those from the left and the right, but God will keep us unified in the sense that if there's any nation that dares to come and invade our country or come a, a bring a, a go into war with America, Americans will stand together as one. That's what I'm saying. I want you also to know that the Lord said that he will preserve the White House. And not only that, but the gates are open. One gate leads to eternity. The other gate leads to hell. There are two types of wind. One, the wind of the Holy Spirit, and then the wind of destruction. God completely wiping out the left. And then I have said that we are entering a time of the wedding supper, but also the time of John 2. I want you to know that God is about to remove the old wineskin and release fresh wine. Now, Concerning the things that are going to happen and the things that you, you and I see going on, I believe that, that we need to stop the name calling because God is calling for wisdom and God is calling for unity. Look, no matter whatever, whatever it is, I want you to know that the Lord knows those who are pure in heart, those that want to work together for the common good, those that understand Joel 2 and 3, Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 4, Acts 5, Acts 6, Acts 21, 1 Kings 19, 19, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 2 to 8, the coming match, God knows who truly is speaking truth. Look, this is not about groups. This is not about anyone. This is about God. And so I wanted to share with you concerning the vision, the valley of slaughter. I share with you the demon of Alan Lucifer. And I share with you concerning the war against the saints. But God is calling for unity. It is the final visitation. It is the final move. And it is the final movement of a move that we have never seen in this movement of God raising up and putting a different anointing on you. But it's not a Toronto blessing movement. It is not the streets of Azusa or Pensacola or revival meetings back in the 40s where they had tent meeting, even though I declare to come out and and bring your tents out because that's what the Lord said on January, on July the 1st, excuse me, not J July 1st, bring out your tents, pop them up and pull them up because God said 
that he's daring you to believe and to dream big that on July 1st, as you come out to the streets, you set up your tent. It's an Acts chapter 5 manifestation. Great miracles and great signs and wonders will take place. But anyway, I wanted to share from the vision, the valley of slaughter and how I was taken into that vision and I saw thousands and thousands of skulls and skeletons piled up. And then the Lord began to speak to me. But you and I need to get ready to rejoice because if you are truly a prophet or an apostle or a teacher or an evangelist or a pastor or a born again believer so down so passionately for God's kingdom and God's work and for God, you can sense that the atmosphere is changing. I believe with all, without a shadow of a doubt, I believe that God liberates and cancels COVID-19 and a supernatural God does a supernatural thing. We are going into a whole different level of the supernatural things of a living God who is still, still the same yesterday, today, and forever, who is about to elevate all of us, cultivate and captivate our souls and spirits. In a moment where it's pitch dark, we all need to focus and pay attention to July 1st, 2021, because as I said three and a half weeks ago, the Lord opened up my spirit and said, can you detect the air? Can you sense that there's a fresh new air? And I believe that the grace of God will fulfill those things. God will literally wipe it away. Well, I want to just say thank you to those that follow us and listen to our telecast on Catch and Go. And remember, as I always say, I catch you on my next telecast of Catch and Go. God bless.